Hi there, my name's Mark uh, from isoma.net. I'm here to talk to you about a waste table I made for Museum of Science and Industry in Manchester. It's basically a fiducial recognition table, similar to a Microsoft Surface tables you may have heard of, um, only a fair bit cheaper when you make them yourself. Uh, this table was sort of part of a recycling exhibition they had there, um, and students could place various Petri dishes on top of the table. Each Petri dish would have on the bottom of it a fiducial code similar to this one. That would then be read in and it could then be augmented by different graphics. I'm basically going to show you a little bit on my own laptop how it worked. Um, I'm first going to talk you through some of the other software I'm using outside of Flash. At the, up here on the top right I've got Reactivision. This does most of the hard work. It recognises, uses the webcam feed uh, turns up the contrast in various squares, you can see some of the edge squares there. Um, and then it makes it easier to detect a fiducial. Um, once it does, it gets its position and its rotation, and it sends it on in OSC format. OSC is used by many synthesizers and other things like that, which is originally where Reactivision came from. So down the bottom here I've got uh, the Flosk server, that's just a sort of Java gateway server. Um, this recognises the OSC uh, format and converts it into XML. The XML is then fed onto the Flash and it uses XML sockets to interpret it. Um, enough of all the tech stuff, I'm actually going to show you how it works hopefully. Uh, takes a little bit of a while to sort of connect to the OSC server. This would happen every morning in the museum. So here it is. This is the original sort of initial teaser loop, um, getting students to place a Petri dish on the table. So I'm just going to put this one up there, uh, and hopefully it's going to recognise it. There we go. You can see its uh, its movements now mirroring where my hand is. Um, obviously it doesn't work quite as well as it does in real life. Uh, there's a little bit of a, an issue with lighting and stuff. But it works pretty well and it, it, it fits quite sharply. I think the uh, Reactivision is running at about 15 frames a second here so it's quite smooth animation. So in this Petri dish, uh, this example one, I believe it's a lid of a coffee cup. And this is made out of cornstarch, so originally, originally children are just looking at this going, uh, whatever. Um, but they can actually rotate the Petri dish and rewind time. And you can see where it came from. So children can be surprised that it came from corn, see that it's now a, a lid to a coffee cup. And then in the future they can see what's going to happen to it. It can be broken down, it can be used as food for the next corn plant, and then made into a lid again. So this is kind of quite cool, and you'll get some of the brighter students really responding well to it. You'll also get some of the, uh, maybe the younger students uh, will just like the noise that it makes as you rotate it, and there will generally be sort of three or four children around the table just playing with them, making it make as much noise as they can. Each one makes a different sound as well, so uh, one for the budding musicians there in the class. Um, I'm really surprised at how well the Reactivision server runs. Uh, I mean, I can just show you here. This uh, this other fiducial I've put on, it's a slightly earlier version It's uh, of the uh, interface there. It's uh, showing stuff in 3D as you rotate it. Um, but it's running both of them at the same time, and it's not really pausing for thought at all. It's uh, it's going pretty quickly. In the end, the, uh, the Science Museum didn't really like the 3D effect, so the entire exhibit is just done with this version of the Petri dish. Another cool feature of it was um, when people go into the Science Museum, they get their picture taken, they also um, get their names recorded and things like that, and all this information is stored on the server. So if you've got a barcode, um, you can put it into one of three points on the table. There'll be one on the left side, front, one at the right. Um, I haven't got a barcode reader on my laptop, but I can sort of fake very badly them logging in. Now, in the actual table itself, there'll be a pop-up here which would show the, the student's image and their name. Um, hopefully you can get enough focus here to see these slight white sparks. 
They were being given off all the time with the Petri dish being there, but they're now being attracted to that log on point. So a student can kind of see that there's a relationship between the two. They can move the Petri dish over the log on point and it will save the data from that Petri dish. This doesn't quite work in this demo, unfortunately. I don't have so much connectivity to the server. Um, but the cool thing is the a student has just looked at various different Petri dishes. The ones that interest him can then be saved. So at the end of their visit, they can go and get a URL, a unique URL, which will have a listing of all the Petri dishes they've looked at while they've been using this table. Um, so it's like a brilliant way of taking class notes uh, really simply and easily. Um, that's roughly the functioning of the table and the work I've done on it. Uh, if anyone out there is trying to make their own table and has any questions about it, please just uh, send me a comment on YouTube because there's some really tricky things. I mean, like uh, these fiducials, uh, they're actually read by, they're sort of lit by an infrared light and uh, the webcam is meant to pick up the uh, fiducials off them. But if you print them out on an inkjet printer, you won't get a very good result. If you print them out on a laser printer, they'll re get read in really easily. There's so many little tricky things to actually setting this table up in real life. I hope you've enjoyed uh, watching this video. This is one of my first ones. So, um, yeah, I hope it's gone okay. Thanks.